What's up, y'all? I use Apps Script a lot with Google Sheets, but you can use it with other Google products. And today we're going to look at Google Forms. So specifically, I'm going to create an, a calendar event using a Google Form to trigger that onto my Google Calendar. Fabio sent in this question, and I really appreciate that. Thank you for it. It made me dig into some of this that I'd never looked at before. And also thanks to the idealistically Caspin post from 2021 that just gave me some uh, very basic things about how to use AppScript with forms. I've never done any form stuff before now. To start, let's do this. We have a calendar to calendar form here, and I'm going to get just the bare essentials. So I want email address, event title, start date, start time, end date, end time, and invites. So down here, this is where you'll enter an email address if you want to invite someone to this event. Now, the reason we have start date and time separated is because I did want to validate that this is a date and that this is a time. And to my knowledge, you cannot in the form itself have a date time object, although that would be nice, Google. But be that as it may, we're going to grab them separately and then combine them in our apps script. To get to app script from Google Forms, you open the script editor from this menu. And if you've done anything in Google Sheets or otherwise, you'll recognize this apps script project menu. And we could actually title this to calendar. And here's where we write our code. Now, this is the working code right here. And I'll have links to these in the description below. So click like on your way down to the description and subscribe to the channel. But you can check out all this on your own if you want to make a copy of this project. What we want to do is have this function run every time a new form submission is submitted. So we need it to trigger. If you go over here in this menu, go away from the editor and down to this, this is triggers. And as you can see, I've added a trigger on form submit that's going to run the function to calendar. Pretty basic. So in order to do that, we click the add trigger button. If you have more than one function in your app's script file, you select the function that you want to run. I've only written the one, this to calendar function. Incidentally, you do have to write the function before you come in here and set up the trigger. Uh, you choose which deployment should run, so I only have head here as an option. Select event source, and the event is going to come from a form. And then I want this to run on form submit. So you could have it run on open, but I want it to run on form submit. And I won't save it again because I've already done so. Okay, so here's our working trigger. We go back into the code and we can walk through what this code is doing. So the function is to calendar. It's going to run whenever we submit a form response. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to say, hey, the form is form app .get active form. That's going to grab our active form. Then we're going to, in a variable, hold the responses by going form .get responses. And this pop method, that's going to allow us to grab just the most recent response. Let's see if I can get the tool. Yeah, there you go. That little toolbar to pop up for you. So this just removes the last element from an array and returns it. If the array is empty, undefined is returned, yada, yada. So our responses are held in an array, and this is going to pop out the last response because we don't want to keep making duplicate events. We just want the most recent one. Then we're going to use the method get item responses, and that will hold the responses in the variable responses. Okay. We're going to add a few more variables here, and let me just uh, properly indent stuff so it's back to orderly. Let title equals responses zero dot get response. Remember, these responses are held in an array. So if you go back to our form, the array starts with the event title at zero. Then start date is one, start time is two, three, four, five. So there's going to be those six objects, zero through five index for our responses. So we're going to grab the title by selecting the zeroth place and saying get response. And the same thing for start time and end time. 
Only here's the tricky thing we're doing with the times because these are strings in our response and we need to create date items out of them. So even though it's a valid date in our form submission when someone enters in a date, it's actually held as a string uh, that I'm bringing in here from the responses item in that array. So we're gonna convert it back into a date by saying new date. We're gonna take response one and then get response plus a space plus response to get response. All right, so let me just comment out. Whoa, not that. Let me comment out this and, and show you what is happening here. So let's say logger.log start time. And I'm gonna run this and you're gonna see that the last test submission I did has this right here for the start time. I've created a date out of these items. So it's combining this right here with the time and creating a date object. So if I didn't have this space here and we run it this way, it's not going to like that very much. So it's actually not giving me the correct time because it's all fouled up because in order to concatenate these two items, the string of a date and the string of a time, it wants a space in between them. Okay, so we just give it that space by doing it like that. And again, we're back to a proper date object for that start time. We do the same thing for the end time. And then for our guests, this is our last response. We get the fifth object or the sixth object at index five rather of whatever email addresses we entered. And then let me uncomment this stuff. Here's where we use our calendar app, app script to get our default calendar, create an event, and we're gonna use the title, start time, end time. And then these are optional parameters guests are equal to guests, that variable we made, and send invites true. So it's going to email our guest list. Okay, are you with me so far? Let's do a test in just a second, but first we're forgetting one thing. So we're using the default calendar in our app script, see right here, and that's fine, but if we wanted to do this on a different calendar, and I actually do, then we need to come over here and let's grab in the settings for one of our specific calendars, in this case, one I've made so I can test stuff like this. Let's grab this calendar ID, and then instead of get default calendar, we're gonna go get calendar by ID. Inside double quotes, we're gonna enter that, and. Don't forget to save the project, which I actually forgot to do in one of my test runs here, and it didn't work because it wasn't saved. Uh, so we've got that calendar ID now, and we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna preview this form. Let's fill in some info. And our response has been recorded. So if all goes as planned, that should be now in our calendar. And let's see if it is. Hey, there it is. How about that? Uh, and we also correctly added this guest with our other email account, and we're awaiting, there it is, that FNA show at Gmail. And here's that email address. Here's the event that I just created. Hey, let's just go ahead and attend it. Now, I found this to be super cool. I hope it's been helpful for you. I made another video on AppScript here that you can check out next if you want to add calendar events from a spreadsheet. Hope you have a great one. Thanks. <laughs>